Well, my next guest uh, is going to be the keynote speaker tonight uh, at the um, Blo uh, Blossom Spring Bouquet, or a banquet, I should say, Blossom Spring Banquet, there we go. And uh, that's going to be held in Grants Pass. It's the Pregnancy uh, Care Center. And uh, I tell you what, uh, this lady is very inspiring, Judy Squire. And let me, if you haven't got a ticket and you'd like to go, let me give you a phone number in case uh, you'd like to attend that special uh, Blossom Spring Banquet tonight, 541-479-6264. Again, that's 541-479-6264. And you can call that number and see if there are any tickets left if you'd like to attend that banquet and go out and support uh, the Pregnancy Care Center there in the Grants Pass, um, headed up by our good friend Robin Fuller. But their special guest speaker tonight is one very special lady, Judy Squire. Join me as we talk to her now. Well, today's a very special day on Focus Today because we have a very special guest, and she's going to be the keynote speaker coming up uh, at the um, Pregnancy Center in Grants Pass. Judy Squire is with us today. She's a speaker and the author of a fascinating book called The Majesty and Brokenness. And Judy, nice to have you with us. Good to be here. And it was going to be called The Majesty of Brokenness, but as I wrote the stories and found out that Jesus was with me all every step of the way, it became His Majesty in Brokenness. It is His Majesty in Brokenness. Well, your story is a fascinating one, and um, tell us how and why are you disabled? It was a birth defect. In 1945, I was born. The doctors had no forewarning. And so I was a total shock in the delivery room. And the doctor st stumbled into the waiting room and told my father, your daughter's going to live, I'm sorry to say. So that was Earth's perspective. Wow. But I grew up in a minister's home, was taught the Bible, and gradually realized that there are no fetal flukes in utero, but it was holy design. Wow. So, and you were born with without legs? Without legs and a deformed left hand. So okay. it was webbed and the Shriners did many surgeries on it. So, and they, the cause of this is what? They didn't know. It was not um, the drug that people were taking in the 40s and 50s. It was just during that first trimester, legs did not develop. All right, so you got an incredible story. Um, why are you speaking before the group on Friday night? I've given it a lot of thought, and it was my husband, David, who last night said, Judy, the reason you're speaking at the Pregnancy Care Center is because you want to promote the um, protection of babies in utero with birth defects who are being aborted, whether they are lacking limbs, whether it's spina bifida, incomplete closure of the spine, whether it's Down syndrome. Babies like me are now being targeted all around the world, in America, in cities everywhere, to be aborted because they'd never live a good life and they'd be expensive. You know, um, th that almost is the downside of modern medicine, isn't it? Because now it we, can, we can know before someone's born. In your case, they, they had no way of knowing. Exactly. It is the downside. And your story, um, how have you experienced God in all this? I mean, I realize you're raised in a minister's home, and that certainly is a tremendous asset. But in your own heart, how did you handle this? I would say I experienced God because I needed him. I watched life pass me by. My family loved me, but I was still lonely. And I was um, not welcomed in the neighborhood crowd. I wasn't welcomed in the public school down the street. So I was always pushed aside, put on the back burner. And I think need is what introduces us to God. And my need was great. Mm -hmm. So I met him early. But it's been layer uh, after layer of trusting him and learning to believe that, yes, it's all good. During those young developing years when kids can be cruel, um, did you ever get angry at God? 
Always. I mean, I'm a, I'm a contradiction. <laughs> out of one side of my mouth, I praise him, and out of the other side of the mouth, my mouth, I get disgusted with um, my life's lot. But it's gotten more and more praise out of this side of my mouth because he's shown up and he's um, faithful and he's shown me that our brokenness is what is the bridge to that intimacy with our Savior. You know, sometimes, Judy, um, God says no. You know, I think uh, now talking to you, I've interviewed uh, Johnny Erickson taught him many occasions where she's prayed for God to intervene, and the answer was no. How did you handle that? Grumpy. <laughs> I've got a grumpy side, but even in the no's, he companions with us. And we, he doesn't just say no and close the door until it becomes a yes. Mm. It's in the no's that we are desperate enough that nothing in this world can satisfy us but him. You know, you speak of loneliness, and I don't think any of us could understand that kind of loneliness, because you really are isolated, at least from your era of time. You know, you and I are almost the same age, so when we were growing up, we didn't have all these modern technologies and things that we got mm -hmm. today. So uh, I, I don't know, how would you describe that loneliness when you couldn't be with the other children and your family really didn't want you around? It was a pit. It was a dark pit. And yet, and in my book, I write the story of that loneliness. It's the 24 karat miracle. And how my sister's friends would take her over to their house and I'd be left at home. And I found our piano and I would sit and with my eight fingers, I would play hymns. And it never was joyful, but come to find out as I've looked in the rear view mirror, Jesus was on that piano bench with me. Mm -hmm. I was not alone. So as my sister with the full calendar, as she grew into young adulthood and looked back, she realized that I was the 24 karat miracle because I had Jesus. And so my, just my lonely life was a bridge to her finding the Savior. Well, that's beautiful. Um, when did you realize that your life had meaning and had purpose? I think it's been a little here and a little there. At age 13, my dad had me giving speeches. And I'd look out at the audience and I'd tell them about learning to walk on artificial limbs and then learning to walk with Jesus Christ. And I felt like I had something that was encouraging to them. So, and my family always cheered me on. So I knew I had purpose. But there's still that loud voice inside that says, loser, loser, mm -hmm. loser. Oh, wow. So it's been layer upon layer, being in the Word, writing the stories, having three daughters that adore me, my husband of 45 years, I'm his queen. Little by little, I can finally hear God saying, I'm lovable. Wow. Um, when you stand before a crowd that's there to uh, support a pregnancy resource center and the whole subject abortion, which is phenomenal, you know, and uh, your own story of how God was with you in the womb, what do you say? I want to say that um, it's people like me that God tucks his glory into. It's the broken places. It's Jesus on the cross, the most broken place of all. That glory came through, not at the moment, but eventually resurrection. And Johnny Erickson Tata, who, who you mentioned, she has a quote. It's over 60 words, but I want it on my tombstone. Can I quote it? Absolutely. This is the answer to that question. And this is why we dare not abort broken babies. Johnny wrote, people with disabilities are God's best visual aids to tell the world who he really is. As the world watches, these people persevere. They live, love, trust, and obey him. And eventually, 
the world is forced to say how great their God must be to inspire this type of loyalty. So I think broken people are where God puts his presence. And I always wanted that on my tombstone, but the older I get, I might have an urn from um, Lee Wassing's Glass Forge. And if I'm cremated, I was telling a friend yesterday, if I'm cremated, where am I going to put my Johnny quote? And he said, Judy, you'll just have to have a billboard next to your urn. <laughs> That's Isn't beautiful. That dear? That's just really special. Where can people get a copy of your book? Let's see, it's, uh, can they get it uh, online or through your, do you have a website? I have a website. It's www.judysquire.com. And it's uh, Finding God's Masterpiece in Your Missing Piece, His Majesty in Brokenness by Judy Squire. And uh, let me encourage you, it's a fascinating story. It's amazing. Um, I've often said through the years of hearing people's testimony, whatever God saves you from or brings you through, he usually turns around and makes you a minister too. He does. And that's what he's doing with you. Thank you for coming in. And uh, you're now a Southern Oregonian. I am. <laughs> I do love it here. Good. But we left two daughters in the Bay Area, so that was hard. What's next for you? What do you think? Well, God's I'm finishing my next book, which is called Living in the Names of God. And I do public speaking. My dad trained me well. And we have grandchildren. We were just at a preschool graduation at Grace Baptist Church before coming here. Oh, wow. So we've got a full plate, and I never would have dreamt that I would have the life I have now. Well, you are an inspiration and a blessing. And just a little bit, what is your new book about? It's about how El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God, showed up when I was the mom without legs, taking care of three little ones. It's about Jehovah Jireh providing for all of my needs. It's about Jehovah Shama, the God who never leaves us. He's always with us. So it's 18 names of God wow. that have been the bulwark of my walk without legs. Well, thank you for coming in and sharing your story and uh, blessings upon you as you minister uh, before uh, the Pregnancy Resource Center in Grants Pass on Friday night. And um, let's stay in touch since you're close by. And, and when your new book comes out, come on in. I thought you were going to say, let's stand tall. I'm ready to stand tall let's for stand, Jesus. Let's stand tall. Okay. Thank we'll you. We'll see you. Wow, what a lady. And again, that's tonight uh, in Grants Pass. And if you'd like to get a ticket, call 541-479-6264. Four, uh, that's 479-6264. We'll be right back.